In the same way that Jason Voorhees shows up, whenever anyone gets it on at Camp Crystal Lake, horror movie sequels will always reliably grace our screens. And while there's no guarantee that these will all be masterpieces, horror hounds do have a bunch of interesting follow-ups to both classic and new franchises that are set to launch over the next year or so. I'm Josh from What Culture Horror, and these are the 10 most anticipated horror movie sequels coming in 2022 and beyond. Number 10, Lights Out 2. David F. Sandberg's Lights Out was one of the most effective original horror movies in years when it dropped in 2016. Sure, it wasn't as tight as the shot it was based on, though in fairness that was like 5 minutes long, but its innovative tale of a monster named Diana who only appears in the shadows still delivered in the scares department. It resonated with audiences too, turning enough of a profit that a sequel with the original director attached was quickly announced. Sadly, that was 5 years ago, and there's been no update on it since. The main roadblock seems to be that Sandberg quite rightly so, became one of Hollywood's most in-demand directors. After helming other impressive franchise horrors like Annabelle Creation, the filmmaker moved into the realm of superheroes with the well-received Shazam, and since then he's been busy on the superhero sequel. But with production almost complete, we might finally see movement on this long gestating follow-up across the next year. The Benign, Attack the Block 2 Joe Cornish's Attack the Block was an inventive twist on the alien invasion horror subgenre as a gang of troublemakers in London found themselves having to step up and become heroes while being hounded by bloodthirsty invaders. The leader of this group was Moses, played by John Boyega in a role that put him on the map and gave him the opportunity to become the star he is today. Despite strong reviews though, the flick struggled to make back its tiny £8 million budget, though in the decades since it has enjoyed a cult following and plenty of after-the-fact reappraisals. Because of this power, a follow-up was eventually belatedly revealed to Deadline, with Cornish back directing and Boyega reprising his role as a now grown-up Moses. Exact plot details aren't known, but the team did promise, quote, an even bigger slice of inner-city alien action. Number 8, A Quiet Place 3 and its spin-off. While it didn't quite leave the same impact the original did, A Quiet Place Part 2 was still a well-received success, and at the time of writing, has pulled a stonking near $300 million at the box office. Now, while that is $50 million under its predecessor, that kind of change is no small feat for any movie released in pandemic times, let alone a non-Disney blockbuster. Outside of its performance, though, it's clear that this sequel was constructed with a follow-up in mind, and without spoiling too much, it definitely suggests suggests more to come by the end. However, fans aren't just getting another installment, as two movies set in the Quiet Place universe are currently planned. Up first is a spin-off, which is set to film in 2022 for a 2023 launch. While the spin-off has a new creative at the helm, it's still based on a story idea from series originator John Krasinski. Krasinski himself presumably offloaded the idea to continue working on the main series, with the final part of the trilogy currently in the early stages of development. Number 7, Insidious 5. The dream team of James Wan, Lee Winnell, and Patrick Wilson is essentially an excuse to print money, as proven through the massive success of The Conjuring and Insidious movies. It's the former franchise that definitely dominated out of the pair though, enjoying three main installments and a slew of spin-offs that have brought in hundreds of million dollars for Warner Brothers. Insidious is no slump either though, and while it's been quiet for the past few years, the most recent installment, The Last Key, was pretty good, even if it moved the story away from Wilson character Josh. The latest flick, however, will not only see Wilson back in the saddle, but also in the director's chair. The actor is making his directorial debut with the flick, which will pick up with the character and his family 10 years after the original movie. Now, Wilson is a fascinating choice to helm the flick, as while he doesn't have much experience, his relationship with James Wan and his impressive horror acting catalogue will hopefully have rubbed off on him. With Lee Winnell also providing the story outline, let's hope this is a grand return for the series. Number 6, Cloverfield 2. It's hard to not think of Cloverfield without also thinking of its completely wasted potential. The found footage monster movie made a huge splash at launch and, not wanting to do anything conventionally, opted for a unique approach to franchise building. Instead of delivering more of the same with a straight up Cloverfield 2, 10 Cloverfield Lane, a slow burning chamber piece less about alien monsters and more about human ones, released under a shroud of mystery. It was different from its predecessor, but it was a great, tense thriller that proved the Cloverfield name could be used as a stamp of quality for a bunch of of loosely connected anthology horror movies. Then, though, the Cloverfield paradox killed that idea dead, and future tie-ins were all scrapped. That was until 2020, however, when it was announced that another Cloverfield movie was in the works, and this time it's been constructed as a more faithful follow-up to the original hit. Fans have been waiting ages to see just what happened following the monster's rampage through New York City, and hopefully this flick will give us the answers. 
Number 5, Final Destination 6. There are some sequels that have been stuck in development hell forever. We've been waiting on a new Friday the 13th for a decade, Sam Raimi spent years teasing us with a proper Evil Dead 4, and Final Destination 6 has constantly been talked about without anything to show for it. That looks to be changing though, as the property finally gains some steam in 2019, with Saw writers Patrick Melton and Marcus Dunstan being brought on board to pen the script. In 2020 as well, the producers teased the plot of the movie, saying, quote, Where they're toying with the idea of having it take place in the world of first responders, EMTs, firemen and the police. These people deal with death on the front lines every day and make choices that can cause people to live or die. With the franchise coming full circle in surprise prequel Final Destination 5, this new flick also has been touted as something of a reimagining, so let's hope it's worth the extended wait. Number 4, Predator 5 Skulls. The Predator franchise is one of those where its characters and world are actually more popular and successful than the actual movies that they're from. While the original is of course a classic, the series has struggled with sequels ever since. Now, you might not know that a fifth film is in the works, and that's actually how the director would prefer it. See, the original plan was to release it into theatres as a surprise, without drawing attention to the fact that it was a new instalment in the franchise at all. Unfortunately though, because nothing can remain fully under wraps in the modern age, Skulls is Predator connections were leaked and reported on, with the director taking to Twitter to say, quote, This was meant to be a surprise. Been working on this for almost four years now. I am very sad that what we had in store for how you could discover this movie will no longer happen. It's a bummer, but also, yay. So yeah, it is a shame that we won't get the full surprise as intended, but hey, it's still exciting that a new movie is on the way at all. Number 3, Halloween Ends. Wiping away decades of story was always going to be a risky move, but Halloween's Hail Mary absolutely paid off. Michael Myers and Co are now back and bigger than ever, and so it was no surprise when David Gordon Green's revival was given two more sequels, Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends. It's anyone's guess as to what the story of Ends is going to be. Though, if I was a betting man, I reckon it'll probably involve the shape continuing to murder people around Haddonfield and that it'll probably, uh, end things. Seems a safe bet, right? Number 2, The Exorcist. In a recent video, I joked that nothing is off limits to Hollywood and that even seemingly untouchable movies like The Exorcist have revivals in the works. Well, since that went live, a whole bunch of new information has been released about the new project, including a confirmed release date for 2023. In a $400 million deal, three new Exorcist films have been ordered, with Halloween's David Gordon Green attached as the director of at least one installment. Ellen Burstyn is reprising her role as Chris as well, the mother of the possessed Reagan in the first movie, who is tracked down by a character played by Leslie Odom Jr. after his daughter is possessed in a similar fashion. Now, The Exorcist has been a particularly tricky property to continue over the years, with botched prequels and disastrous sequels always failing to live up to the lofty original. With this multi-movie commitment, though, it's clear that Studio Blumhouse has faith in Gordon Green's vision, and hopefully he can repeat Halloween's trick. Number 1, Evil Dead Rise. Earlier I mentioned that Sam Raimi spent years teasing a potential Bruce Campbell starring Evil Dead 4, but he's always similarly talked up another sequel, that being a follow-up to Fed Alvarez's 2013 Evil Dead reboot. While that flick was mostly well received and it did well at the box office, there was no real momentum on a follow-up until recently, with Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi announcing the now titled Evil Dead Rise for release in 2022. With Campbell retired from the role of Ash, the new installment from writer-director Lee Cronin will see a new cast of characters terrorised by the Deadites. The twist here is that the old Cabin in the Woods setting has been switched out for the inner city, with the action taking place in a high-rise apartment building, hence the double meaning of the title. It's unclear at the moment whether the new story takes place in the world of the original trilogy, the remake, or something entirely new, but it should be noted that the cinematographer also worked on the Ash vs. Evil Dead TV series, which might suggest a deeper link, but I thought it was worth mentioning as it's a cool addition regardless. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Which of these sequels, if any, are you looking forward to? And are there any cool ones I missed off here? While you're down there as well, can you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to What Culture Horror for more lists like this on the regular. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.